Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really powerful mini gaming PC from Zotac. And I've actually been waiting a long time to get my hands on one of these. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my mini PCs. But this one here is an absolute monster when it comes to these smaller form factor PCs. And this one is known as the Z-Box Magnus 1 from Zotac. Overall design here, really digging the honeycomb they got going on. Got plenty of airflow here, and at 8.3 liters, we will need a lot of airflow because this is actually rocking an RTX 3070 and a socketed 10th gen i7. We've got 8 cores and 16 threads up to 4.8 gigahertz, and like I mentioned, for its size, this thing is an absolute monster. So this is coming in at 8.3 liters. It is much bigger than some of the other little Ryzen-powered mini PCs that we've taken a look at, but they don't come close to the performance that this thing can put out. It's still a really small form factor PC, as you can see here. Throw an Xbox controller right next to it. And yeah, it doesn't take up much space at all. I really like the minimalistic design they have going on here. And when it comes to I.O., they didn't skimp out at all. Actually, we've got a lot going on with this thing. Up front, we've got a full-size SD card reader. 3.5mm audio jack, full-size USB 3 port, USB Type-C, around back we've got 6 more USB 3 ports, and in total we get 4 3.1 ports and 4 3.0 ports. We also have a Gigabit Ethernet port and a 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet port back here. It's got a full-size HDMI port on the board. This is HDMI 1.4 for the internal graphics, and since we have an RTX 3070, we've got another full-size HDMI 2.1 port, and three full-size 1.4a display ports. Zotac actually makes two variants of the Magnus one, but the one we have here is the ECM7307LH. We've got an Intel i7-10700 CPU, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 2.9 with a turbo up to 4.8. For the GPU, we've got that RTX 3070. This supports SODIMM RAM, and you can go up to 64 gigabytes, but I'm running 16 in this in dual channel. When it comes to storage, we can do two M.2 SSDs and a single 2.5 drive, and you can run Windows, Linux, or basically anything else that'll run on an x86 platform with this machine. For everything you're going to see in this video, I'm running Windows 11 Pro, but before we jump into testing, I did want to do a quick teardown just to show you the internals, because the way this thing's put together is pretty amazing. So around back, we've got two thumb screws. Once we pull those out, we can push down on this, move it back, and you'll see that we have two integrated fans. This is actually pretty cool because as soon as you just slide this back on, it makes connection and you're good to go with these. And by the way, all of the fans are adjustable from the BIOS. Both side panels are removable. We're on the GPU side here. We've got that Zotac RTX 3070 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. Moving over to the CPU side, we can just slide this right off and we've got access to our memory. We've got access to our M.2 slots, our 2.5 inch drive and the CPU cooler. So it's really easy to get in here and add more storage or RAM. And remember, this is a socketed 10th gen i7 CPU. Love the way they've got this 2.5 inch drive mounted in here. We've got our connector and just one thumb screw. So it goes right in with that bracket that's included with the Magnus 1. So obviously the motherboard here is a custom job, but it does support dual channel SODIMM RAM. I'm running 16 gigs in this unit. We've got some pretty beefy heat sinks on the VRM. And this is a custom cooler for that 10700. We've also got dual M.2 slots, and this does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. So far, everything's been working out really well with this machine. Like I mentioned, I've got Windows 11 Pro installed. And for the monitor I'm going to be using in this video, it's a BenQ 4K60 monitor. I'm at 1600 by 900 right now, so we can get a better look at it. But when we get into gaming, everything's going to be tested in 4K. I got a feeling that this thing's going to do an amazing job at those resolutions. And in this video, I'm going to run some benchmarks. We're going to test out some 4K PC gaming. And we're also going to try out some 4K emulation with the higher end stuff. But the first thing I want to take a look at are a couple benchmarks. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 5, single core, 1248, multi, 7991. It's not up there with the new Intel Alder Lakes, but you know, I didn't expect it to be. This is a 10th gen 10700. This is the non-K variant. I think it's doing a great job in this thing. I also ran 3D Mark Fire Strike. We got a total score of 25,942. And the last one I ran here was Time Spy with a 12,482. These scores are looking absolutely amazing for the size of this thing, and even if this was a mid-tower, I'd say we're getting some really good performance. But now it's time to see how this thing can really game, 
And first up, I'm just going to go ahead and get it out of the way, God of War. I've been playing the heck out of this. I beat this game on the PS4 Pro, but once it came out for PC, I knew I had to try it out. They've done a really great job porting this over. And with the Magnus One, we're at 4K Ultra with DLSS set to quality. And we're getting an average of 68 FPS out of this. Now we can definitely get more by going down to 1440p or even just turning DLSS to like performance. But with this basically maxed out with that DLSS set to quality, it's totally playable like this, and I wouldn't mind locking the V-Sync on and playing through this whole thing again. Moving over to Forza Horizon 5, 4K Ultra settings, we're getting an average of 115 FPS. Now this will do extreme settings, and with it set up like that at 4K, I was getting an average of 78 FPS, so it's more than playable. And again, kind of just like, uh, you know, God of War, I would just turn V-Sync on and not even worry about it. You can definitely max this game out here at 4K. So when it comes to Halo Infinite, I was hoping for a little better performance out of this, because at 4K high settings, I was only getting an average of 58 FPS. It would drop down a bit here and there. So if you want to go 4K with this, medium settings is the way to go, or you can do Ultra 1440p and run it at around 83 FPS average all day. Going into Doom Eternal, I was pretty sure we'd have a good time with this at 4K Ultra, and as you can see, we're getting well over 100 FPS. Actually, by the end, my log stated we had an average of 121 FPS. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in here, so here we have MK11, 4K, maximum settings, running at a steady 60. Now I will tell you, initially when I started this game up, I was getting a lot of dips, but what I did was just shut the game off, boot it back up, and I was good to go. It was dipping down to around 48 or 50, so I do think it was kind of a bug with the game itself. I also tested out Dirt 5. This can be a really hard game to run, and even 4K high settings, we're only getting an average of around 69 FPS out of this one. So medium 4K would kind of be the way to go, or 1440p, very high settings. This is just one of those games that needs a lot of GPU power to go to very high 4K, and that RTX 3070 just isn't going to cut it. And the final game I wanted to test was Red Dead 2, 4K Ultra, and I had a feeling we weren't going to get great performance at 4K Ultra with this. Now it's totally possible to play this at 4K high on this machine here, and get an average of around 72 FPS, or you can go up to Ultra at 1440p and play it through just fine. Now it's time to move over to some emulation. I got a bit for this video, but with this machine here, I think it deserves its own emulation video because we do have a lot to test. But first up, we have 3DS using the Citra emulator. This heavily relies on OpenGL, and these NVIDIA cards do a great job with OpenGL on Windows. We're at 5x resolution, and it's running really well. Next up, we have some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. I'm at 1440p, running at a stable 60, and I did try this at 4K, but I was getting some graphical artifacts. Now, it wasn't dipping down. We were still running pretty well. I think it's a driver issue with the latest NVIDIA drivers in this emulator. But it still looks great and plays amazingly at 1440p. And the last one, at least for this video, we have PS3 using RPCS3. Vulcan back in, we're upscaled to 4K, this is Skate 3. This is one of those games that's just really hard on the CPU, but this 10700 is trucking through. Now with this, we are pulling over 115 watts with that CPU, and as you can see, that temperature is getting a bit high at 87 degrees Celsius. This fan is kicking up on this little thing. But these are the highest temps that I saw, and this is just one of those games that really loves those extra cores and threads. Anytime we're working with such a small form factor PC with this much power, I always like to take a look at CPU temps. I kind of monitor them as I'm going along, and total system power consumption from the wall. Average gaming through everything you saw in this video, it averaged out to around 72 degrees Celsius, 
and the highest temperature I saw out of the CPU was 88 degrees Celsius. But when gaming, normal use, no problem at all, we're averaging around 72, so we're good to go. When it comes to fan noise, under normal use case scenarios and even gaming, it's really not that bad. But once that CPU hits around 81 degrees Celsius, those little fans do kick up and it can get a bit loud. But it really only hit those temperatures when I was doing, you know, PS3 at 4K and running benchmarks like Cinebench R23. Total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, this pulls 38 watts. I'm actually in performance mode from the Windows settings. Average gaming, 237 watts. I did see it jump up to around 280 every once in a while, but on average, we're 237. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and the GPU was 378 watts. This does come with a pre-installed 500 watt power supply, so we're well under that threshold. But by no means would I call this a low power consumption PC. So in the end, I'm really impressed with the performance of the Z-Box Magnus 1, and given the CPU and GPU they chose to use in here, I figured we'd get some really amazing performance. And like you saw, this is definitely a 4K machine. I will have one more video coming up with the Magnus 1 very soon. I do want to get some emulation under the way on this. We're going to test the real high-end games for PS3. We'll do some Wii U. We'll throw some Xbox 360 and some more original Xbox at it. So if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to learn more about the Z-Box Magnus 1, I will leave a few links in the description. And if you have any questions, you know where to leave them. But like always, thanks for watching.